We're here, uh, I'm here with Fred Sikre of Abraj Capital, and uh, my name is Munir Nabti from uh, Heber and Divine Media in Lebanon. And we're sitting here in a cafe in Oxford University at the Skoll Forum. And I uh, just want to talk to you guys over there in Tech Wadi in Silicon Valley, a little bit about uh, entrepreneurship in the region. Uh, first off, thanks to Osama Hassanein for inviting us to send a few remarks. And uh, just first off, I wanted to ask Fred about, um, maybe let's start with the positive elements first. What do you think is the biggest opportunity for entrepreneurship in the region? Well, the region is vast. Um, if you're talking about the Middle East and the North Africa region, um, it's a very diverse region. Uh, and the biggest opportunity, really, I think, is to be able to understand and, and tap into the diversity of, of, of the region. So uh, you have places like Lebanon and Jordan where uh, entrepreneurship is very present in the software development sector, in the IT sector. Uh, you have um, countries like Tunisia and Morocco where the opportunities could be seen more in terms of the manufacturing and the food and agricultural sector. So the biggest opportunity that we have um, on the one hand is the diversity of the region and of course is also the region's youth. Uh, it's the youngest population in the region and the biggest natural res resource of the Middle East. A lot of people think it's oil. But in fact, it's the youth of the region that is the biggest opportunity. And I think just tag, uh, tagging off of that, that uh, in terms of the young people, there's both the element of a, a big group of people who are potential entrepreneurs and potential consumers. But at the same time, uh, the young people now, and especially we've seen the last couple of months, the young people are demanding change. They're demanding opportunities. They're demanding uh, uh, the chance to build something more. And so I think... Uh, as well, the, the the idea of entrepreneurship that helps people achieve those uh, can be very can be a very exciting opportunity. And, and with this, the, the one I'd like to highlight the most, I think, is around education. That there's a great need for educational improvement in the region. Both in itself, it could be a a business opportunity. Um, I think, especially if the focus is on balancing this idea of the social impact of education and the profit uh, making potential of education, but also in that. It's a, it's a big enabler. Young people know that they need to improve their skills, their capacities to really compete in the global scale. And, um, and young people want to improve their skills. They want the chance. They want to do what they think is necessary to, to, to take those opportunities and go with them. I think, I think you're right. It's, the, it, um, it's youth. And I'm also seeing living in the region. I live in Dubai, but we cover the whole region in our business. Um, I'm seeing also middle-aged middle people who have also taken to the streets and who are also demanding that change for their own children that they see growing up. So it's not only the youth, it's also, uh, I think, the middle class and middle ages, mm -hmm. middle-aged people who are also requesting and wanting to have a return to more opportunity and see more opportunity for their, for their, future, for their own kids. Interesting. Okay, so now moving over from the, uh, the nice uh, opportunity side, and let's talk about the challenges for a moment. Um, what do you think are the biggest, or what is the biggest challenge to entrepreneurship in uh, the Middle East? I think the biggest challenge is probably um, that most of the region, in terms of the leadership, whether it be governmental or even private sector, are still largely in a state of denial. Uh, about the new world order in which we're all living. Uh, and by that I mean that um, transparency, accountability, um, uh, inclusiveness, uh, whether you're running a business or running a country, um, is absolutely necessary in the way you apply your, 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 your authority or your, your responsibilities towards your employees, towards your citizens. Changing the mindset of leadership in the region is the biggest challenge I think that we have. Interesting. I mean, I, I agree. I, I, the, the, there's the structural elements that are big barriers. Um, at the same time, I think that, you know, relating to the mindset that even within the, the context of the current system where, you know, the internet is bad, electric, you know, especially talking about Lebanon, but I think it's much broader than that in the region, you know, problems with electricity, problems with the business procedures and registration processes, um, problems even with, with the skills of employees. I mean, all of these things are, are very true. 
Um, in my mind, I think some of the biggest skills from the entrepreneur side come also down to the softer skills, the creativity of entrepreneurs, the critical thinking, um, really the, the, the curiosity. You know, what we found a lot in Lebanon is that, uh, with our work, our work with young people, is that um, a lot of young people are not that curious. And how can you uh, develop that kind of curiosity, the passion, the energy to do something that hasn't been done before or to, before they even start an entrepreneurial venture to fill a gap, they need to identify the gap. And so they need to be critically analyzing the, the scene, the situation around them. And so some of those softer skills, the, I feel like a lot of the technical skills of young people are there, um, but the gap, the, the more difficult gap is, is in these softer skills. I think it relates back to your earlier issue on education. Um, if education systems are not reformed, do not, even, even if family values in some parts of the region do not encourage dissent Mm -hmm. uh, don't encourage debate, don't encourage the acceptance of failure, which is something in California, obviously, yeah. which, the, you know, you have taught the world. Uh, but the notion of failure here is still uh, a stigma that, that you wear rather than a badge of honor. And, uh, and, and so changing the mindsets and, and, and allowing for more creativity uh, has to occur in the family unit and also in the education systems. So just last question, we're, we're talking now to uh, people worldwide and people in uh, Silicon Valley. And just in terms of, lastly, for people who are outside of the region, what do you think is the number one contribution that they can make? Or what role should they play in terms of fueling entrepreneurship here in the region? Is there something specific or in general? I think it's, um, I think it's to come to the region and to participate by sharing your stories of success and failure to an increasingly curious and thirsty segment of the Middle Eastern population um, which is wanting to learn uh, and is wanting to reciprocate what others have done elsewhere. Uh, through technology today this is easily done and the penetration of internet is, is increasing rapidly throughout the Middle East and the North Africa region. So I think um, showing uh, the aspiring Chain, game changers that are uh, growing in the Middle East and coming to support them uh, is the biggest contribution that can be done. Engagement. Engagement. I mean, we, we, we always talk about the, the role that the diaspora communities can play, and, and all of the countries in the region have substantial diaspora communities. Um, I, I think it's a great point. It's not just, you know, the time and the expense of traveling is a barrier to some, but it doesn't have to be the only way or the main way of connecting. Absolutely. But that people should connect. And show support. And show support. Well, hopefully uh, this has been uh, interesting. And uh, again, from a cafe at uh, the Skoll Forum in Oxford, um, good luck to you guys in Silicon Valley and, and people around the world.